Rook endures a fever dream of painful memories when he wakes up to find the animals talking to him as a raging forest fire closes in. Has Rook finally lost it, or is something darker happening? Let's find out in Rook Exodus number 5 from Image Comics. See you in 3. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Rook Exodus number 5. Fever Dream is right, sort of. Jeff Johns uses Rook Exodus number 5 to force Rook into facing his repressed pain over his father, the home he left on Earth, and why he never fully bonded with his flock. The answers may not be as satisfying as Johns intended, but the issue promises strong potential for what comes next. Before we dig in, let's recap what happened in Rook Exodus number 4. When last we left Rook and Direwolf, they managed to defeat Ursaw's Lieutenant Wardens in a bid to give Carapace time to escape the Oasis with the Wildlife Grid. Say all that five times fast. Unfortunately, Ursaw broke through the Oasis defenses to take the Wildlife Grid for himself. When Rook tried to stop Ursaw, he was easily beaten down and tossed over the dam's edge. In Rook Exodus number 5, that's the current issue, Rook wakes up after washing ashore from getting tossed off the dam by Ursaw. The face greeting him, however, is not one he expected. It's Pumbaa, Swine's favorite hog, who thanks Rook for saving his life in the earlier fight. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Just hold on a darn minute. <laughs> you might be thinking that's pretty crazy. And, and to be fair, you'd be right. Pumbaa thinks, speaks sort of at Rook in perfect English. The development is pretty unsettling, and you're not quite sure if Rook is hallucinating or maybe there's some sort of technological quirk from the wildlife grid that has enabled him to telepathically start hearing Pumbaa's thoughts. It's weird, sure, but it is also intriguing. Rook struggles to make sense of a talking hog when they're both startled by a nearby explosion. Ursaw sets the woods ablaze to drive the animals and Rook out into the open. Man and hog flee and Rook puts on his warden helmet, believing the birds will show him a safe route out of the forest fire. Unfortunately, activating the link sends him into a hallucinatory state where he witnesses the destruction of his father's home by fire. Pumbaa urges Rook to search his feelings and consider that the fire that destroyed their home was set by his father in desperation instead of through an accident, as Rook has always believed. But Rook rejects that notion. By this point, we've pretty much answered the initial question, which is how much of this issue is hallucination and fever dream versus something else. It's pretty clear at this point, it's very far into hallucination territory. While it partly feels like the momentum from the fight with Ursaw slams on the brakes in this issue, we're getting some really strangely interesting deep character work that explores Rook's mindset, which loosely connects to why he can't connect with his birds like the other wardens do with their animals. After this sort of nightmare scene of watching his homestead go up in flames and his father trying to save all the animals in the barn and all the painful catharsis that goes with it, the dream switches back to the forest, where the birds have found a way out. Unfortunately, the path ends at a cliff, forcing Rook to make a choice. Can he open himself up to his birds and take a literal leap of faith? Rook chooses to open his mind to the flock, including their leader, which he always suspected but never made contact with, and he joins with them as partners and jumps. For readers who might be inclined towards anxiety over a fear of heights or what have you, the leap really only occurs in Rook's mind. Here, the leap of faith goes to the extreme end of metaphorical storytelling, and it's a little bit on the nose, but the incident forces Rook to confront the reason behind his inability to fully bond with his flock, namely that he hasn't trusted them enough to hear them, so that mistrust is returned. Rook needed to take this metaphorical leap to complete the bond. The issue concludes with signal interference creating a very unique problem, an act of God which solves another problem, and a son taking up his father's cause. Overall, Rook Exodus number 5 is an interesting character piece that exposes some of the emotional and mental baggage getting in Rook's way, leading to some mature character growth that sets him up for a stronger sense of purpose moving forward. That said, the energy and momentum from the last few issues takes a serious step back and really gets placed on the back burner for Jeff Johns to develop this bit of character growth. Let's switch gears for a second and talk about the art. It is literally impossible, well maybe it's not literally impossible, but it feels like it's impossible to overstate how good Jason Fabok's art looks in this issue. The amount of detail is jaw-dropping, and Fabok's cinematic eye for action, scene progression, 
all of it put together is just astounding. The Ghost Machine imprint refuses to skimp on art quality, which is one of their hallmarks, and it shows on every page. If you are into comics because of the art, you're not going to find anything better on the shelves right now. Let's take a step back and look at the big picture. Readers who have been following along with Ghost Machine may have noticed other titles such as Geiger, Junkyard Joe, and Redcoat are drawing closer to some kind of crossover. There's an interconnected timeline where these characters will start to overlap, presumably in some big event. Not sure of the details, but it is coming. As of now, however, Rook is not part of that impending event. If that situation changes, we'll report on it. But as of right now, Rook is pretty much on its own. Final thoughts, what do we think about Rook Exodus number five? It's another masterpiece of top tier art in an issue that slows down the pace and momentum to get inside Rook's head. Jeff Johns makes up for the lack of plot with a strong character piece that forces the titular character to grow and become the hero he needs to be for whatever comes next. So the issue may not be what readers have expected given the last few issues, but it's still worth the cover price. Therefore, Rook Exodus number five earns a solid eight out of 10. Despite putting Ursaw and everything happening on the back burner, this is still a very strong issue. But what do you think? What do you think of Rook Exodus so far? Leave a thumbs up if you've been enjoying the series and drop a comment below with whether or not you want to see Rook Exodus cross over with other Ghost Machine titles. Also remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.